Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. Mix Up in La Cruza, another adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine... The little town of La Cruza is located on the coast of Mexico. First airplane stop to your south. In the spring, before the heat sets in, it's lovely. Lovely. I know you'll enjoy it. I have, the week I've been here. Your plane tickets are enclosed. And, of course, there's only the one hotel. Quite adequate, with better-than-average menu. Your assignment will be quite simple, Mr. Valentine. Theft. Just ordinary theft. Small object... Of great value, worth perhaps $100,000. I know you'll have no trouble stealing it whatsoever and getting away with it. Any violence that you find necessary will be uh, that much to the good. Even though the person you'll steal from will, quite naturally, be me. Of course, I'll write you a note sometime sometime after after your arrival tomorrow to cover your more specific instructions. I suggest that your assistant travel more or less incognito. As a divorcee, perhaps, since divorce is a rather popular business here in La Cruza. And as for you, Mr. Valentine, I have complete confidence in your ability to steal from me and in your ability to behave in a most criminal manner. Yours most sincerely, Pascal Van Teufel. Of the uh, paper doll cutting Van Teufels, I suppose? No, George, it's R-D-G-D-A. Huh? Royal Dutch Gem Dealers Association and member of the International Diamond Dealers Institute. Oh, You mean it's me that's supposed to be crazy. Member of the Fall Guy and International Suckers Institute. Darling, I've heard that La Cruza is a very beautiful place. Quite small, but with big swimming pools and tropical ponds. Tear the letter up, Brooksy. Tear it up. Throw it away. Only it does make you kind of curious what he means. Why he'd want you to steal from him. Angel, look, it's either a confidence game or a sucker case. If that guy thinks I'm nutty enough to... Yes, George? Swimming pool, huh? Mm Mm-hmm. Tropical palms, huh? Mm-hmm. Brooksy, let's take a look at those tickets to La Cruza. And she means you. Huh? Me? Come on, come on. I want to get over that desk and register. Oh, welcome to La Cruz. Oh, welcome, welcome. I know it's a man. I just know it is. I can remember so well. Hi, lady. Here, have a sip. You don't mind a little lipstick on a glass? Oh, look, I'm sorry. Oh, it's I, uh... champagne, not tequila. Here, it's nice lipstick. I said no thanks. I'm sorry. Look, sister, will you please? Oh, listen, sister. Oh, it sounds wonderful. She, you're a mother? What? Oh, uh, honey, I didn't mean it. I just... Well, I was afraid to ask. Your wife? Neither one, darling. He's George Valentine, and I'm Mrs. Brooks. I'm down here for my third divorce. Oh, an amateur. Uh, well, I was going to say I just met him on the plane. Well, you can have him back sometime when it rains. But in the meantime, I'm staging a little party, and he's exactly uh, what I need. For the to... last time, Bedelia. I... That's my name, Bedelia. Well, you get yourself and... unwound, will you? You're spilling that drink, and look, you're getting your necklace in it. Ah, oh, but it's a farewell party. Just me and champagne, and now you to say goodbye to my diamond necklace. You mean every one of those things is real? Sure, honey. All diamonds. See, a hundred thousand dollars worth. Isn't it absolutely revolting? (laughs) Ah, here we are. Sit down. 
Now, isn't this better? Just the two of us. Uh Uh-huh. And the diamonds. Aren't you afraid to wear them, Petitia? Oh, the necklace has been in the hotel safe most of the time. Besides, all these people are harmless. Particularly the men, darn it. Now, hold your glass, Daddy. No, no, why don't we skip the champagne? You don't need any more. No more champagne? Oh, Mr. Valentine, you'll drink it out of my slipper if I say so. Do you have any idea where I've been for the past year? In a lower Slobovian sort of a country in Europe you never even heard of. Me, Bedelia. From Brooklyn. I beg your pardon, the Bronx. Oh, sure, sure. Okay, ladies, so you've been traveling. A whole year without even seeing a, a used car dealer or, or an item like you. Uh, what were you doing over there, wherever it was? Being married, naturally, to a Slobovian. Gosh, how do you think I got these glass eggs? Illegitimate? <laughs> So that's it. Present from your last husband. It's my settlement. And it's weighing you down. I stopped here to get my divorce on the way home and raise a little cash. Mm, You're going to sell the diamonds, huh? The uh, farewell party? Mr. Valentine, do you know where they can sell this thing best? Way down in South America where the beef grows. And can't you just imagine some bull of the pampas putting these gorgeous things around the... The neck of a cow. May I be of, of any assistance here? Or perhaps I may. Oh, oh, no, I'm quite all right, thank you. We uh, we have an engagement, you know, my dear, at the bank in town. Oh yes, I I'll be there. Don't worry. Well, I I, I only thought uh, this gentleman here, the the uh, stranger. Oh no, he's I... not. He's George Valentine, and this is Mr. Pascal Van Tiefel. Huh? Well, Van Teufel. Uh, at your service, sir, but... Uh, Valentine. Isn't that strange? I don't believe I've ever heard the name. You what? And, and yet your face is uh, so familiar somehow. Uh, you've ever been in Madagascar? Hey, uh, well, look. it's of no consequence. Hey, wait a minute, friend. Uh, What's the idea, Van Teufel? What's the I'm idea? really a very busy man, sir. Sure, Buster, but... And you can't the... tell me I haven't seen your face before in, in quite different circumstances. Now, good day to you, sir. What's the matter, Mr. Valentine? But, India, who is that guy? Mr. Van Tyfel? Well, he's the dealer. He's the man who's going to take my necklace down to South America and sell it for me. Uh-huh. He's going to take it, is he? Well, yes. I'm going to meet him at the bank and sign it over to him. His plane leaves tonight. Tonight? Well, excuse me, sister, but I got work to do. And you... Oh, no, no. Stay here. Stay oh, here. Oh, will you? Look, nobody's going to touch that as long as you're wearing it. Oh, I didn't mean that. I... And that's you. I mean... Oh. Oh, it... you did. Do it again. Sure. Close your eyes. I'm the Countess, third time removed. Did you ever kiss a Countess before, Mr. Valentine? Mr. Valentine? Well, he's gone! Well, now, wouldn't that fry your griddle? Oh, Mr. Valentine. Mr. Valentine, I don't believe that you've registered yet. Oh, yes, he has. (gasps) Has he? Oh, uh, hello there, uh, Mrs. Brooks. Uh, What did you say? A piece of Kleenex to wipe off the lipstick, Mr. Valentine. Oh, sure, I didn't... uh... Say, I was looking for someone, a big, heavy-set man. He just stepped out of the bar a moment ago. My name is Hill. I'm the manager of this hotel. Oh, I'm glad to meet you. About this man, his name is Van Teufel. I'd like the number of his room, and I want to send a telegram, too. Can you tell me where I could do that? Uh, Of course. It's in town, the telegraph office on the plaza. Since you'll be going through there anyway... Since I'll be... Hey, what's this all about? You look like you just swallowed a fish, Mr. Hill. He's been asking me a lot of questions about you, Mr. Valentine. He says other people are asking questions about you, too. About me? Look, Buster, I haven't got any friends in La Crusa. I'm quite sure you haven't, Mr. Valentine. But uh, would you be willing to identify yourself more fully? Would you be willing to state your exact business here? Sure. Minding my own. Now, Buster, what in the name of heaven Mr. Valentine, I regret this. But I must inform you that there is no longer a reservation here for you. What? There's no space in our hotel for a person of, uh, your sort. And don't you dare raise your hand if you don't leave this instant. Boy, front! Goodbye, Mr. Valentine. Front! Who 
Who'd you send the wire to, George? Big jeweler friend of mine in Mexico City, Angel. A fellow named Emilio. Want to find out how genuine this joke of Antifa is and fast. George, I don't understand this whole You and me up. both, Booksy. Come on, let's go over to the bank. Adelia's going to transfer her necklace to the guy. Ah, Senor Valentina, a thousand pardons. Hey, what's this? What's this? Yeah, I'm a lieutenant from the police. Senora. Wait a minute, the police. Hey, there's nothing to worry about for you, Senora. But for a man like Mr. Valentin, with the international reputation as a jewel thief, that is the color of a different horse, naturally. A jewel? So that's what the fish eye at the hotel was talking about. Now look, Buster, I don't know who starts the rumors. Yes, Senor, but... please, no resistance. But, of course, the police would not act without more information. However, Senor Valentin, I beg to announce you're under arrest for the crime that you were seen uh, uh, molesting a woman in a bar. But they said you were the one I should see, Lieutenant, and I've already showed them the wires from police in the United States. I mean, look, usted conoce. ¿Qué él es el señor Valentín? Y ahora usted está seguro lo que es en verdad. Hey, let me out of this place, will you? I'll tear it down. I'll burn it up. Will you guys let me out of this place? Yes, señor, por favor, silencio. Dejen que la va. Esto es increíble. Dejen que la va. Yes, yes, of course we are releasing you, Senor Valentin. It was quite easy to verify who you really are. Only about this other matter, this uh, molesting... Who reported that, Lieutenant? Who preferred those charges? Uh, that's the legal reason why you're being released. We don't know. We can't find out who it was. He never showed up. Uh-huh. Riddle number 57. Okay, Lieutenant. By the way, your assistant does not speak very good Spanish. But, well, I rather got the idea she thinks you... Did do a bit of molesting here or there. Well, this is it, room 17. It wasn't easy to find out, George. That manager, that Mr. Hill, watches everybody like a hawk. Yeah. Mr. Van Teufel? Found out about the bank, too. Bedelia gave Mr. Van Teufel the diamonds, and they signed some papers, and that's about all I guess. Mr. Van Teufel! Wait till I get my hands on this guy. Mr. Van Tyvo. Huh. Mr. Van? Uh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, right here, Valentine. Oh, you're going to admit you know me this time, oh, huh? Of course. Only only shut the door. Yeah, here we are. Now, look, my friend. Start rolling up your sleeves. Ever since I got that crazy letter of yours, I've been working in a three-ring squirrel cage. But from now on, oh, Buster... Valentine, please. I, I know it was a strange assignment, but asking you to steal from me. But, but please, sit down. I... I don't feel so well myself, you know. After all, you hit me pretty hard. I what? Oh, yes, yes. I, I was only just waking up from it, I suppose, when I, I heard your knocking there. George. Oh, now, don't apologize. <laughs> after all, you had to take the diamonds away from me. My congratulations, Mr. Valentine. You stole them masterfully. <laughs> Turn to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Here's good news for you motorists who have cars with automatic transmissions. When the transmission is due for a checkup, all you have to do now is pull in at your nearest standard station or independent Chevron gas station. The men at all these service stations have been thoroughly trained in lubricating automatic transmissions. And don't think this service doesn't require skill and knowledge. For your automatic transmission is a precision unit. Just a small amount of dirt could damage the mechanism. The wrong fluid level would be harmful, too. And it's very important to have your automatic transmission drained and refilled with factory-approved fluid at regular intervals. So for perfect performance of this vital part of your car, ask for the protective service you get at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations, where they say and mean... We take better care of your car. And now back.
back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. You go to the little town of La Cruza in Mexico because a man named Pascal Van Teifel wants you to steal something from him, a diamond necklace. Well, even if you're as curious and stubborn as George Valentine, you're beginning to think you shouldn't have gone. So far, you've been accused by the hotel of being an international jewel thief, and the police have thrown you in jail because someone reported seeing you molest a woman in a bar. Now, to top it off, Mr. Van Teifel congratulates you. He says you've done a masterful job of already stealing the $100,000 necklace. Buster, I did not knock you on the head with a sharp instrument, and I definitely did not take the but, necklace. But, but, Father, you got my note, my instructions. What are you talking I left them in your, what in your note? room. What note? What note? What room? He doesn't even have a room, Mr. Van Teifel. That Mr. Hill canceled his reservations, threw him out of the hotel. Oh, it's all my fault. I started the rumors about you, naturally. Oh, naturally. Well, I, I merely wanted people to start thinking of you as a thief. Thanks for the friendly build-up, chum. Anyway, if there was any method in your madness, it worked too well. And so someone else, anyone, it must have found that note. Maybe it was the same person who got you out of the way, George. Who got you put in jail for making passes at the Countess. Van Teifel, suppose you start at the beginning. Well, I, I suppose first I should take a look over here. What's that, a jewel box? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Uh, there we are. Of course. But, but there's the necklace. George, look at it. No, no, my dear. I was robbed. The necklace was in a little leather bag in my pocket. And, uh, you see? It's gone. What? But the... uh, this one in the box, my dear, is nothing but paste. Just paste. Oh, that does it. So now we got two necklaces. And Mr. Valentine, when, when I agreed to take the necklace to South America for sale, I was worried... There were too many people around who seemed to be watching me, watching her. I've been in these things before. I'm a bit of a psychologist. Oh, sure, sure. I can hear Freud turning over in his grave. Well, it's much, much too expensive, you know, to insure a necklace so valuable during the time I would have it as a dealer. So to protect myself, I had this paste imitation made. <laughs> it's very good, too, isn't it? And I assure you there's not a soul here in La Crusa who could possibly tell the difference. Uh, no. No, I couldn't. Go on, go on. Well, that's where you were to fit in, you see, to take the hounds off the trail of the fox. <laughs> to endure the little false reputation I rumored about you, and then steal the paste diamonds here, and then be caught. Yes, and everyone would have believed that you had stolen the real ones. <laughs> I would have been safely on my way to South America with the real necklace, and no one following me, the hounds, would have been left barking at you. Hmm. Well, it wasn't a bad plan. It just didn't work. Somebody else got my instructions and followed through. Only they took the real diamonds instead of the paste. Oh, Mr. Valentine, please. You're going to help me, aren't you? I don't know, friend. He certainly is not. You got yourself into this mess? Oh, but, 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 but my plane leaves in only a few hours. I, I, I have appointments with buyers in South America. $100,000. I, I signed a note for that amount. Where would I get it? You'll think of something. You're a psychologist, remember? Wait a minute, Brooksy, hold it. Uh, the bright boy here hired me for my criminal manner, didn't he? What? Oh, thank you, Mr. Valentine. You will help me, huh? You will. Oh, sure, sure. He hired me to steal from him. So, Buster, hand it over. Uh, uh, the box you... with the necklace, the diamonds, the paste. Come oh, on, no, give. see here. I, I and when you're getting you... robbed, you don't talk back. George! George, what's the matter with you? Yeah, he looks like he'll sleep for a couple of hours, but step on it. Now that I've done it, I don't want to get caught. George, you've gone crazy. No, it's just my turn to play a man of mystery for a change. What? Keep your eye on the little ball, Brooksy. See if you can tell what I'm doing. Come on, Brooksy, read me that wire. All right, George. Um, George Valentine La Crusa. Regarding Pascal Van Teifel, he may be a little sharp at times, but Van Teifel is definitely a legitimate gem dealer. Internationally, yours, Don Emilio, jeweler, Mexico City. Mm -hmm. So the client's okay? Uh-huh. Well, we'd, we'd know where we stand a lot better if your friend in Mexico City had said he wasn't okay. Oh, Angel, stop worrying. Come on, join the party. Party? Sure, party for me. Didn't you know? I'm going to fly to South America in a couple of hours with Van Teifel. Yes, yes, that's it, Pablo. 
Drink up, Lieutenant. Uh, no, no, please. I'm on duty, you know. I only came out because you telephoned. Ask me to bring the expert here. Well, there's one for him, too. But I tell you, Lieutenant, I am wasting my time. What was it you wanted, Senor Valentin? An appraisal, that's all, an appraisal. If I'm going to fly south with Van Teufel carrying these things, i got to have something official to wave at the customs people on the way. Well, all the handsome men. Ah, the Countess. I suggest we all step into Senor Hill's office. Why? If the expert's in a hurry, let's get it over with. Hey, our expert. What do you think? <sighs> mein Himmel! Hey, 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 keep it down a little. What do you think? In my life, I assure you, I have not ever seen such, such beautiful, such perfect diamonds. Appraisal? Oh, and about a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> George, which are those things, real or phony? You heard the expert, Angel. These are worth a fortune. But they're the same ones you stole. Yet if Van Teufel is supposed to be honest and he told us they were paid... Well, I can't tell the difference, can you? That's what I mean. Okay, then. Why worry? I told you to trust Junior. Trust Junior. You wouldn't even let the lieutenant give you a man to guard the things and to... George, where are you going? Out through the patio to room 17. For a little conference with my fellow criminal. I think he's all right now, Miss oh. Brooks. George. George, Van can you hear me? Where's Van Tuyfel? We just found you, George. I waited almost an hour. Wait, wait. What's this, blood? Sharp instrument. Cut the back of your head a bit. Yeah, wait a minute. White dust. In case you're wondering, you don't have any diamonds anymore. No diamonds, huh? No. Well, come on, we got to step on it. Van Tuyfel's room. Empty, Mr. Valentine. He's gone. Well, he can't have been gone long. No diamonds in here. No leather bag, no jewel box. Of course not. I've been asleep. But I'm awake now. Come on, let's find him. Yes, I put Mr. Van Teufel in a taxi for the airport a half hour ago. He's aboard his plane by now. Wouldn't you know? Now, where's the master plan? Now, where are the diamonds? Well, it's pretty obvious, isn't it, Angel? Van Teufel's got them. Well, of course he does. He, he would wouldn't ha- have left here otherwise, would he, Countess? Well, see here. If you think we should chase after Mr. Van Why, Teufel... Why, Mr. Hill? Why? Van Teufel's a legitimate businessman. Now, George, listen to me. No, listen to me, all of you. Oh, I, I know you all paid too much attention to that expert I got the lieutenant here to bring. He was very convincing, I thought. You mean he wasn't an expert? Of course not. Now, I'll, uh, I'll grant you it didn't work out exactly the way I thought it would... But I guess the diamonds showed up again in Van Teufel's room, so he just picked them up and pulled out. Mr. Valentine. What I didn't expect was to get kicked over the head like that. I thought the switch might come easier. But, uh, I guess that kicks you right in the face, doesn't it, Petitia? What in the name of... White dust, powder, and a sharp instrument on the back of the head. It's a nasty weapon, isn't it? And Van Teufel got exactly the same treatment. Stop that! I just want to take a look at the heels of one of those white suede shoes you tried to get me to drink champagne on. Stop all the insulting things! I might have known it was you when you got so nervous in the bar tonight when Van Teufel didn't show up. Were you scared you'd hit him too hard? (gasps) You mean in my hotel? She Have you taken it? That's her motto. They're my diamonds, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. And you just couldn't stand to kiss him goodbye. So you cooked up a bright little plan to steal from your own agent from Van Teufel. Just as soon as he'd signed for it. I did not. You found out his scheme of using me and stole the diamonds before I could get untangled from jail. Sure. Sure, Angel. Sure, it's that simple. Van Teufel was left with the phonies, and he told us they were phony. What did and you he say? He also told us there was another person in La Crusa who could tell the two sets apart. Sure, that's it. I just stole the paste ones. The lieutenant and his stooge helped me give them a big buildup. 
And then Bedelia here fell like a ton of bricks. I... I what? She got panicky. Came after me. Took the ones I had and switched them. She put the real ones, the ones she'd had in the first place, back into Van Tyfel's. No, no, I didn't. He wouldn't have left unless they were the real ones, would he? So I made you beat yourself, Countess. Outsmart yourself. And someplace you've hidden a piece of junk. Oh. Oh. Well, you don't have to take it that hard, Countess. Feigning is so old-fashioned for a girl from the Bronx. George. Hmm. Who got you thrown in jail? Oh, Brooksy, look, I've, I've already told you. The girl, of course, the girl to get me out of the way. I was just thinking. It, it was for molesting her, wasn't it? Now, how do you like that? Brooksy, I've explained to you a and thousand times. I guess times. she was the only one who was really close enough to... Well, to give a report or tell me exactly what it was. Come that here. George, was that what you did? Oh, never mind, never mind. Just show me again. You're driving along the highway with the family. It's a nice day and everything's fine, except your car is acting a little tired. Every now and then, a car behind you gives you the horn to step it up a little. What's the trouble? It well may be that gum is robbing your engine of its power, the kind of gum caused by the impurities that naturally exist in most raw gasolines. The only way to get rid of those impurities is to refine them out, and that's why Chevron Supreme gasoline is so popular in the West, for it's the gasoline super refined to remove engine-sticking gum. Try a tank full and see how this super refined gasoline gives you that new car feeling. Faster starting, all the powerful pep your car deserves on the open road, and ping-free power on steep hills. Ask for a super refined Chevron Supreme tomorrow. You'll find it gives new power, full mileage in the kind of driving you do. That new car feeling. Ask for it at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Larry Dobkin was heard as Van Teifel, Sandra Gould as Bedelia, Dan O'Hurley as Hill, Jack Crucian as the expert, and Harold Dierenforth as the lieutenant. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. America is faced with a serious tragedy, the loss to one disease alone of more than 200,000 lives this year, the disease cancer. We can strike back at cancer by joining the 1950 Cancer Crusade, by supporting the vast research, education, and service programs of the American Cancer Society. Give generously. Mail your contribution today to Cancer, care of your local post office. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs>